come sit with me at the fire pit. I am, I've built myself a fire. I'm getting ready to read the word. I think Eli's in there. He's been at home sick and Sean's somewhere, but I think he's about to leave. But look at my fire. It's nice and cozy. Warming up my feet by the fire. It's actually chilly out here today. But I was sitting out here and thought I would fellowship with you guys a little bit and discuss a few things before I start sitting with the Lord. And I'll, I guess I'll just start off by saying that when prophetic people see, you know, like seers, prophets, and things like that, I can tell you from my own experience that before we even get into any of this stuff, like I don't even have a timing you know, and even during the elections with Trump, I knew what I knew, but I got the timing all wrong. All of us got the timing wrong. We, we, in our own opinions, because of the things that we saw, you know, tried to predict when and how. And as you grow in, in the prophetic and mature in it, you realize that like, for me, this is how I understand it when I see things. And I, I'm very careful now, but I, I, I know these things, but it's hard for me to put into words what I know. Um, and as far as timing, like I don't even really try anymore. I mean, I can get a ballpark idea, but I don't really know exact timing. But it's like, it's, it's, a, it's, a percep it's like your eyes. Like if you wear glasses and you have a, um, what is that called? Is it called nearsighted or farsighted? I don't know. I don't wear glasses. I probably should check to see if I need some because... It's the, like maybe at nighttime when you're driving and you don't really have a depth perception, like you can see it, but you don't know how far away or how close it is. Like maybe it looks closer than it is or further away than it is, but you know it's there and you just don't really have a depth perception. That's the prophetic. It's like when you're, when a prophetic person and you see things and you know things, you see it there and you can kind of get a ballpark of where it is, but the deception, or the, not the deception, the perception of the object, object, you don't know how far or close it is. So when I'm telling you these things, I know that I know that I know that I know. And I say this because you don't have to believe me or not. There's a lot of people that don't. There's a lot of people that still are on me about the whole Trump thing. And I don't, I haven't wavered. He will be back. It's just that he wasn't back when... I thought he would be back and he wasn't back how I thought he was going to be back. And it didn't go down how my opinions thought it should be. You know, as you mature through these things, you realize it's not about your opinion. It's about what did the Lord say and just forget timing. But there's also things that I know that I've seen like in dreams and things. And I know that I know that I know that was just put in my DNA. Like when I got born again, I just knew these things prophetically that I knew were coming but I didn't know, you know, how to describe when. So let's just a few things before I start reading my word today. Just so you know where we are in time. I have always such an urgency when I'm out at the park. This is, I mainly hit on the return of the Lord. He's coming. He's come. He really is coming. We are so close. I hit on wisdom. I hit on financial stability. And I hit on things like, um, you know, dying to self because all of these for what's coming is going to be needed to be perfected. I am, and we'll see, right? We'll see if I'm, I'm right or any of us are right that believe this, but I do believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. I absolutely do. I believe it with everything in my being. I don't know how much we will see before we get to experience that gift or reward. I just know what I've seen. So I have had dreams of, um, and we're seeing it now on the news. I had this dream, multiple dreams, a lot of dreams about aircrafts in our skies that were not of us, Earth. And I've had many dreams of them hovering in the skies and they're soundless. And sometimes we wouldn't know that they were there until we looked up and we would have this mass 
ship above us and they were so large the only way I could describe it would be like cruise ships sailing in the sky or naval crafts but they had no sound um no propulsion and this was at a time where none of this stuff was being talked about on the mainstream media but now it is they're showing up everywhere and they're showing up on Netflix and we have all these documentaries about it and now it's starting to become normal language And in those dreams, when I was having those dreams, people were following after an antichrist figure, okay? I don't know who it is. In my personal opinion, I have a really strong opinion about this that I don't know who it is. And there's camps that believe, and I'm just going to tell you what I believe just because it's just what I believe. It's what I feel in my spirit. Could I be wrong? Absolutely. But we'll see how this plays out. I feel like we're really close to that. Um, we have a camp that believes that he'll come out of Europe. We have a camp that believes he will be Islamic. And the people who don't like the Islamic Antichrist will say, well, Jews would never accept an Islamic Antichrist. Okay, that's a good argument. And then there's people that don't believe in the European Antichrist that say, but that's just kind of like the wrong area. I believe that Macron has, President Macron, Macron, however you say it, has a big part in this. There's many prophets that have seen his face. I don't know if he's the Antichrist or not. I'm not really convinced on that, but it is someone that we need to watch. He says very biblical end time things constantly. He wants to be the the second Napoleon. He is fixated on being the head of the United Nations, European Union. That's what he wants badly. I'm not really convinced that he may be the one, but will spearhead in the one. I tend to kind of lean towards an Islamic uh, world domination because of heads rolling at the end in Revelation where you are beheaded, you know, because that is a lot of the martyrs in Revelation that are underneath the the throne waiting for their revenge from God. They have been beheaded. I think it's very interesting that the Islamic Messiah is the Christian Antichrist. They call him the Mahdi, but the Mahdi is the Christian Antichrist. I don't know if you know much about Islam, I've studied up a lot about Islam along the years because they are the fastest forced religion. They're they're not the fastest growing religion. They're the fastest forced growing religion. And as you can see, they're very barbaric. And the reason is, is because in the Islamic faith, it is very, very difficult to get to heaven. Like they can do works, works, works their entire life. And they don't even still, Muhammad didn't even still, didn't even know if he was getting in their own prophet, right? And when they make do these acts of violence, their scriptures, their Quran or whatever, or the books that they read, tell them that they get immediate access into heaven. This is why the, the Islamic religion has the highest suicide rate, the, um, the highest depression, oppression rate, um, and it's forced. Um, They are the fastest growing population because in their culture, they believe in multiple, like multiplying, like it's in, they don't have abortions. It's not in their religion. It's not in their culture. They do not. That's one thing. They do not have abortions. So they just keep having bigger and bigger families. I kind of lean towards that Um, theology. It's going to be some type of Islamic forced something that is going to be headed up and started I honestly, in my opinion, in like the Berlin area, like where Hitler set up his throne, like that area is a very hotbed of Antichrist. Um, And it always has been. We'll have to see about that. I get out there in the parks and I do what I do and I do what I do on these lives because of how close we are to his coming. Like we're so close. It's not doom and gloom. It's not anything to be afraid of. 
but it is something that we have to constantly make sure on the inside that we are pure and that we're holy and we have that relationship with Christ. It's really not about stocking up on food and all these things. And while all those things, I, I even talk about being prepared. You have to be prepared in your spirit. Like the silly things that don't matter are nobody talked to me at church or I didn't get this, or this person has too much control, or, you know, this is happening or that, like all of that is things that don't matter. And what really matter is your obedience and your knowledge of the scripture, you knowing your authority in Christ, you knowing your scripture, like Psalms 91, Psalms 23 as word, not just something that you just know and you just, oh yeah, those who dwell in the secret place of the most high, abide in the shadow of the mighty, like got it. No, you know it in your being. Like it is your anthem. And so when I, you know, the Lord has really pushed me to really get through to people. Look, he's coming. This is not a joke. Like we are really here, you know, and, um, getting into the right tribes and, and staying in church, getting into a place where you're not lukewarm, you are solid hot, that you are recognizing the enemy in your life, whether it be in your marriage and your kids, right? Noticing little lies, maybe he'll plant in your head to maybe start a fight with your spouse. Like this is just not the time. This is not the time to not be on your P's and Q's about the voices that you're hearing in your head. It's not the time to be super controlling. It's not the time, nor has it ever been, but I'm just saying it will devastate you for what's coming. Keep you from being rapture ready. And um, like in my dreams, back when I was seeing these aircrafts in the sky and I was seeing the people following after the Antichrist just in these parades and everyone was super excited and I was in hiding all I can tell you is that lukewarm Christians didn't make it. They didn't make it. And um, the ones that just casually go through life and just say that they know of Christ, but they really have no relationship. That has to end. That's when I go out to the parks and I'm preaching wisdom. And I'm preaching, make sure you do not let offense get into your life and get close to those people that have what you lack. Right? Get out and hear the word as much as possible. Don't just let your life just be Wednesdays and Sundays and that's it. Or maybe an occasional Sunday. You need to consume yourself with the word from any vessel and from the word yourself on a regular basis. Now when I'm talking about, uh, let me go into fi financial things now. I started talking about digital assets and currencies way a long time ago because I knew the Lord had showed me something that was coming ahead. And he showed me that our financial system was going to shift. I had no timing. I had no idea when. And I just knew it was headed our way. But it was coming a place where as we operate monetarily was not going to be the same anymore. And it was going to, the shift was going to be so abrupt and so severe that although it would be fixed kind of later on down the road, it would just be our norm that we would be in a digital society, that the shift would cause much chaos like the dollar would lose its value tremendously. And um, things like digital assets, specific assets that the remnant was advised to invest in were not hurting as bad or at all because they built the arcs in their investments and they learned the technology before the transition hit. And that was back in 2017. Now, I do a lot of that stuff behind the scenes because I'm focused on preaching in the park and focused on people's pureness, holiness, you know, their salvations, their wisdom, getting them healed and free. Um, but I do that very much behind the scenes and we'll start picking that back up on YouTube for anybody who wants to know. But I'm telling you it's headed that way. You know, assets like Ethereum, assets like XRP, assets like, um, um, gosh, there's, there's a few Cardano and you know, and if all of these things that I'm saying to you are foreign, I'm worried about you because you're gonna, 
yes, silver, yes, gold, these things, but you can't be carrying around 60 pounds of silver every single time you go to the gas station. Plus, it's not going to be accepted that way. Everything's going to be digital. Do you hear me? For a season. No, I don't, like I said in the beginning, I don't know how long we're going to be here till the Lord returns, but I promise you we don't have that long. We don't. I've gone through every, just to make sure that I'm hearing the Lord right, because it's difficult in a, in a world where there's so much false doctrine, right? And you get pounded with like the grace teachings, the mercy teachings, the preterists out there that believe that we're living oddly in the millennial reign, which is not true. It is not true. And they even see this Israel war as just another war. We've always been just at war. They see no prophetic in anything whatsoever. They have no idea the times and seasons that they're in. And those are the people, while they are saved, they are not rapture ready. I know that's going to be very controversial on some people. I know how that sounds. I've just, I've seen it. Guys, I've just seen it. I can't prove it to you. I've talked to my husband about this. He hears and he listens to me. Um... But there's a lot of things I haven't said because I, I have no words to describe what I've seen. So I don't say anything. I can just, you can, you can believe it. You can pray about it or you can just wait and see. You can just wait and see. Um, I know that Marty Breeden, when he saw the Lord and he's not the only one, there has been so many, the Lord has told, he told him. And many others. These are the words he keeps saying. I'm coming and my church isn't doesn't believe me. That's what he told Marty. I'm coming and my church doesn't believe me. Because if they believed me, then they wouldn't be living as they're living. That's what was told to Marty Breeden. That was told to um, Dean Braxton. That was told to... I mean, the Lord is telling his church this. And he's telling his church this. And he's telling his church this. And so when is the church going to start talking about it? And getting ready for it. The Antichrist is alive. He's here. I don't know if we're going to see him or not. I know that, that the Israel, the Jews, are ready to build that third temple. It will be here. We all know that we don't need a temple. We all know that we don't need sacrifices. We all know that. But the Jews don't know that. They are still looking for Jesus to come. We know he's come. But here's the scary thing. When the Antichrist gets here, this is why I believe the Jews may fall for an Islamic Antichrist. Because when the Antichrist gets here, they don't believe the Messiah, Jesus has come. So to them, that may end up being their Messiah. Because like I said, the Islamic Mahdi, the Islamic Messiah that they're looking for is the Christian Antichrist. Everything in the Quran is the exact opposite of what was penned in the Bible. And the Quran was written 600 years after the Bible was written. 600 years after the crucifixion of Christ. It's the exact opposite. So, you know, these are the things that I know and that I've seen. And I pepper in this financial stuff in my sermons because I've seen how bad it gets. And I see the ones who weren't ready. And I see the ones who've lost everything um, because they stayed in the old system and they wouldn't listen and they wouldn't come out and they wouldn't hear sound doctrine. And they lost 50 to 60, some even 70, some all of what they thought that they had to live on. I've seen cast catastrophe, you know, but there's no time. Like I said, like when you see, you don't have a depth, a depth perception on timing you just have a sense that it's close and it's there you know and um lord what else am i missing so also too we need to be watching for the on the lord's feast days and you need to be aware of the shemitah cycles and aware of the jubilee cycles be very aware with the jewish culture this is why I love studying the Jews. I love studying the culture, the language, because the Lord is Jewish and God chose the Jewish people to do all of this through the land, the people, everything. And he does everything on his calendar, which is the Jewish calendar, the Hebraic calendar, their festivals, right? 
they're not Jewish holidays or Jewish festivals. There's they're God festivals. They're God appointed days. And we need to really focus and keep our eye on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur at the Shemitah cycle endpoints, which is seven year blocks. Like we're already in a new Shemitah and this seven year block ends in 2030. And then the next Shemitah cycle begins. So the Lord really never does anything unless he tells his prophets first. And he typically does, well, all the time in the Bible, everything was done on a feast or feast day. Whether it be Passover, right? We know what happened during Passover. Unleavened bread, first fruits, all those things. Yom Kippur, Feast of Trumpets. All of those things you need to study and get familiar with. So you can be on God's same time clock and appointed times. All right? And this whole alien stuff that I talked about in the very beginning Expect it to get more mainstream and expect it to get more in your face and expect it to get more normal where people are just talking about it. It's coming. I've had dreams about it. You can say, why are we talking about this? You can say it's weird all you want. You can say these things, but I'm telling you what's ahead. And I'm telling you, that's how I know that we're getting close to his coming because I've also seen a correlation between these things in the sky and the Lord's coming. And remember what I said about my son's dream about the return of the Lord. We were carrying apples into Jerusalem when the Lord returned. And I never understood that. But the only time that they celebrate with apples and dishes is Rosh Hashanah. So, which is, you know, it's a fall feast. We've already passed it now. Um, these are the things I know. And really the whole point of this is just to get you guys fired up to get your houses and your life right. I see so many Christians just when I scroll, my, my Facebook is so full. There's so many people on there, like a hundred thousand people. Um, and I'm sure only maybe 1% see my things because Facebook has me so shadow banned, but I, I, there's tons of people that call themselves Christians. I don't really know them. But they're dressing up in Halloween costumes, they're drinking, they, they do these, these casual worldly things. And I'm telling you, that lifestyle will not be agreeable with you to survive what's coming or rapture ready. I'm just telling you, you, you can believe me or not. It doesn't affect my life whatsoever. I'm obedient to the Lord and I do what he tells me to do, which is preach the gospel and just do what he tells me to do. We are there. He is coming. He came the first time. What makes you think that he's not coming the second time? He is going to do what he says he's going to do. And we are that generation. It's very crystal clear here in this word. The prophecies are being fulfilled in Israel. And the Lord says, watch her. You watch her, you'll know the timing. Jesus says, I don't know the day or the hour. We don't know the day or the hour, but we definitely know the seasons. We should know the time and seasons that we're in. You know, I'm 40, you know, 40 more years, I'll be 80. Do you really think all of this is going to go on for 40 more years with the technology, with the chaos, with the gender confusion, with, um, the hate and this evil that has just come up from the bowels of hell on this planet? Nah. Remember the Lord says in the end times, he's going to speed up time. He's going to speed it up. Man, things are getting quicker and quicker and quicker for me in my life. I don't know about you guys, but man, it's just flying by now. Things are happening so quick, especially with technology. I can go live and be around the world in seconds. Send out messages in seconds. Interesting. So, okay, I'm going to start reading, being with the Lord, and I will talk to you guys soon. I'm trying to think if, there, if there's anything I've missed that... I haven't told you guys. I will be live tomorrow. We'll be doing a teaching live tomorrow on YouTube. And I'm with the Lord about more of what we're going to talk about on the live tomorrow. And Lord, is there anything else? Anything else? One other thing. Expect unbelievable miracles. Things that eyes have not seen. The Lord before these things begin and as these things start happening, it's going to be so miraculous. 
because he's going to give everybody the opportunity to be on fire for him and know him because of the great signs, miracles, and wonders that will come at the hands of his people. And it won't just be coming from preachers like myself or big fancy preachers. It'll be coming from everyday people who are Christian and on fire for him. Walking past somebody, maybe paralyzed or in a wheelchair, and saying, hey, get up and walk. And they're faceless and nameless. Miraculous. It'll, it's, it's already happening. Revival's happening all over the place. And it's going to spread like wildfire. So nobody can say when he gets here at the judgment seat day, Lord, I didn't know. Nobody told me. And he's going to say, every eye, every ear heard and knew of me. I gave everybody the chance and you still chose to not serve or believe. That's what's coming. So that's exciting. I love you guys. Y'all have a good day. I'm going to go read. Bye.